flying in on an airplane, what's the first thing they say? If we get into trouble, mask will come down, oxygen's there, and the first thing you gotta do is put it on your kid, right? No, why? They, who do they tell you to put it on? Yourself, you selfish bastard. What's the deal here, right? But it's because if we don't take care of ourselves, we can't care of them. So for leaders, what I always tell them is, it's you first, it starts with you, and it starts with your psychology. 80% of growing a business, if you look at what the chokehold is on a business, it's always the leader. And 80% of that chokehold is the psychology, and 20% is the mechanics. I mean, people in this room know the mechanics and strategies beyond what anybody on earth knows in their category. So it's really about you being in the state where you execute. It's like I always tell people, knowledge is not power, it's total BS. Knowledge is potential power. Execution trumps knowledge every day of the week, and so my life is, how do you get yourself to execute? And execution comes from learning to put yourself in that right state every day. Take a look at any place you've got a limitation and ask yourself, when did I decide to accept that limitation? And you may not even see it as a limitation. You might see it as just, that's who I am. But so often in our lives, we've adapted to be a certain way so that we don't fail or so that people will like us or respect us, but it's not necessarily who we are. Joy comes when you're spontaneous. It's really hard to be truly happy when you're not being yourself. And most of us have no clue who we are. And so a big part of my work, if you've ever been to an event, you know, is to get people to do things spontaneously without thinking, because that's when the real you shows up. That's when the energy comes alive. And when you do that, when you start to connect your true nature, suddenly there's energy available for you to set a higher standard for what you want in your life. That's what this is really all about. And when I talk about standards, when I talk about, you know, shoulds versus musts, think about your own life. I know there have been areas in your life where some point in time you just shifted and you raised the standard and your life changed. Because whatever people have their identity attached to, they live. We live who we believe we are. That's just how it works. It's just kind of like, I'll give you an example. Look at your physical body. Your physical body today is an absolute reflection of only one thing. Not your goals, not your desires, but your standards. The identity you have for yourself. If your standard is you're an athlete, then there's a certain amount of strength, a muscle tone, and energy that's available in your body on a regular basis because that's who you are. And so you do whatever's necessary to maintain that identity. Again, the strongest force in the human personality is this need to stay consistent with how we define ourselves. Because if you don't know who you are, you wouldn't know how to act. Once you lock in on that identity, your brain finds a way to keep you there. If you say, uh, you know, man, I've, I'm overweight, I've always been overweight, I'm big boned, and that's the story you've got, then you're gonna always find a way to get back there. That's your settling point. That's your identity. That's where things lock in. If you see somebody who's in really great shape, you ask them, do you work out? You know the answer. Yes, how often? And they'll tell you three times, four times, five times a week, whatever. In a seminar, I'll ask people, who here works out at least five days a week? And I'm stand up. And you look around that room, and you know that they work out five times a week because you can see their body. You don't just get a result without some kind of action, without some form of ritual. Ritual meaning actions you do consistently. Now, do you think of those people that are out there working out five days a week, do they have more time than you do? Or I have, or anybody else? Of course not. Is their life less busy? Of course not. It's just a must for them. They must work out that way and they've made that turn and their life changed. So I'm not saying you have to work out five days a week. I'm just saying whatever you really want, wants don't get met consistently, standards do. Whatever you identify, this is who I am. And so it's not so much about changing your identity as there's expanding it. You know, deciding that, you know, instead of your goal is to lose 10 pounds, which is not compelling, what if your vision was to get back to my fighting weight? You know, this, this year, this month, this next 90 days, I'm gonna transform my body. I'm gonna take on a new challenge. I'm gonna find some technique or strategy, there's a million of them, that can reframe myself where I wanna feel younger, stronger, more vibrant than ever before. Here's my reasons, because I want the energy to really make my life work. Because it's tough out there and I wanna be stronger than I've ever been before. I wanna go in front of the mirror and if I'm naked, not you know, want to laugh. I want to look there and take a good look and go, yeah, <laughs> I'm proud of whatever I see there. Whatever it takes, something's going to make you laugh, smile, something's going to tease yourself, but something's going to move you to another level. If you identify yourself in a new way and you own that every day and that becomes the standard of how you live, you'll find the way to make that standard real. Money's the same way. Think about it. It doesn't matter what's happening, quote unquote, in the marketplace. People that make money find a way to make money no matter what, don't they? I mean, 
most people's standard is to pay their bills. So that's what most people find a way to do, even when economic times get tough. Most people, if that's their absolute standard, they find a way. Some people's standard is pay their bills most of the time. And so most of the time they do. Some people's standard is not just to pay their bills, but to take care of their family and maybe even some of their friends. And they find a way. In fact, you know, some people may be in a family where they don't have enough money, they barely have money to pay their bills. They work their guts out. And then somebody, their mother, their father, somebody else, their sister gets ill, and there's not enough money to take care of it. Nobody else has money in the family. They don't either, but they find a way to get that money to take care of their mother or father, don't they? And pay their bills. They never could do it before, why? The situation made them raise their own standard. And not everybody does that. Somebody else in the family might have money and still not take care of their mother. It all comes down to the inner game, my friends. Changing your life is a change in the inner game. The outside world you can't control, but you have absolute control over this one if you learn the dynamics of what shapes you. And identity is one of those simple, clear, fundamental basics that if you start, start to shift it, everything else will shift in your life as well. Some people, by the way, have to have more than enough money to do what they want, when they want, where they want, with whomever they want, contribute the way they want. And if that's their must, they find a way. I know that sounds overly simplistic, but it's true. You know, somebody once said, you can take all the money in the world out of the hands of everybody, out of all the wealthy people in the world who are really successful, give it to other people. It wouldn't take too long. Those people would have it back in their hands. It's not because they're manipulative. It's because they have a standard. Some are manipulative, don't get me wrong, but they've got a standard of what they're going to find a way to make happen. I'm just simply saying to you, take those three magic words and live them. Raise your standard. Rule number two, be truly fulfilled. Michael Gerber, the guy that wrote the E-Myth, you know, talks about why so many businesses, young businesses fail. And one of the things he says is most people are not really entrepreneurs, but they think that's what they should be. Getting things is not going to make you happy. That's good news in a tough economy. It's a good reminder. You know, it doesn't matter what you get. It doesn't matter whether it be money or opportunity. All those things might excite you for the moment. You know, even a relationship, as magnificent it may be, might be exciting for a while. But if you don't keep growing, that relationship isn't gonna stay exciting. So the secret to real happiness is progress. Progress equals happiness. And if we can make progress on a regular basis, we feel alive. And that's why at the beginning of the year, we get this thing like, okay, I can have this fresh start. I can really do what my soul desires. I can expand, I can grow, I can improve, I can change. Or maybe better than change, I could progress. See, think about that. Progress is an aliveness to it, doesn't it? You don't have to work at changing. People say all the time now, well, I'm, I'm working on changing. Don't worry about it. You don't have to work on changing. Change is automatic. Your body's gonna change whether you want it or not as the years go by. And no matter how hard you work, there's gonna be some changes going on there. And the economy is gonna change no matter what you want it to do. The weather is gonna change. Relationships are gonna change. Everything in life is always changing. We don't have to work on change. Change is automatic, but progress is not. So if you wanna make real progress, then you really gotta look at your life in a different way. You gotta say, I gotta take control of this process and not just hope it's gonna work out like people do who make a resolution.